Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. Friday, April 28, 2023. Today on The Young and the Restless Jack looks back on his past with Phyllis. Summer confines in Daniel and Lauren lashes out at Michael. At the added house, Ashley opens the door to Tucker, who notices she's surprised and reminds her. She asked him to move in with her. She didn't forget. She just didn't know it was going to be tonight. Tucker asks if she meant it. She says of course she did. He belongs there, as long as he behaves. Tucker intones, you want me to behave, and kisses her. Ashley says, Mom, what was that for? Tucker says, that was for you, for us. He's happy she didn't let him give up and run away. They smile about the possibility they may be able to make it work. Tucker is glad they can at least explore it. He's also looking forward to seeing the look on Jack's face when he comes down the stairs. Ashley doesn't want to discuss her brother right now and takes him on a tour of the house. At the jazz lounge, Michael attempts to make small talk with a grim-looking Lauren. He wants to get a sense of normalcy back but feels it will be hard in that place. Lauren thinks it's the perfect place. It's the last place they saw Phyllis alive. She has been trying to contain her anger but can't hold it in any longer. Lauren grits, how do you justify defending the woman who murdered our best friend? Michael challenges the idea that Diane is guilty. Lauren argues with him and reminds him he couldn't give her the benefit of the doubt that night and even after Jack pleaded with him. She wonders if this is about his enormous ego. Victor and Nikki gave him a hard time for even thinking about defending Diane. Was this the ultimate pushback to prove he can make his own decisions? Michael fervently denies it. Lauren seeds that it seems like his desire to prove a point was more important than anything else, including her feelings. You knew exactly how I would react to you defending Diane and you went and did it anyway. At Jabot, Jack emerges from the elevator distracted. He enters the office to find Billy working late. Billy wanted to stay on top of things. Jack likes seeing him there and says he can't give the company his full attention these days. Billy would like his input on a few things but will send him an email. He asks why Jack is there. Jack needed a diversion and has just come from seeing Diane. He told her he wanted to marry her right away. Billy asks, what did she say? Jack says she didn't give him an answer. He's not sure why. Billy's sure she's scared and overwhelmed. Jack is doing everything he can to give her a sense of comfort. Billy can't imagine she was prepared for his impulsive gesture. Or perhaps she's thinking there's more to this. Maybe it's his attempt to desperately find something he can control. Jack doesn't need Billy analyzing him. They're engaged, and he was simply moving up the timetable. Billy advises him to slow down a bit. Not that long ago, you were ready to spend the rest of your life with someone else. Someone you love deeply. You called her Red. Now she's gone and I don't think you've even begun to mourn that loss yet. In the park, Summer exhales and crosses her arms. She hears someone and turns while asking, Mom? Daniel is there and says he came back to check on her. Summer asks, Did you see her too? Daniel thinks Summer is overwhelmed. He admits, I see Mom too. I see her all the time. Summer says, This was real. Daniel knows it must have seemed that way, but their minds play tricks on them. Mom comes to me in my dreams. It's a way of trying to hold on to her and feel close and connected to her. Daniel laments that he keeps going over the unanswered questions in his mind. Summer says, What if I had answers to those questions? At Jebat, Jack informs Billy he's misconstrued things. His desire to marry Dane has nothing to do with grieving Phyllis. He's not in denial. Billy isn't buying it. You're not really allowing yourself to understand what's going on inside you. Jack concedes the chaos hasn't stopped since the party. Billy knows Jack will be making sure everyone else is okay without taking a second for himself. Jack supposes that may be true. Billy urges him to allow himself to acknowledge what Phyllis meant to him and allow himself the time to grieve their history. In the park, Summer tells Daniel that everything they believe to be true is a lie. Mom's not dead. Daniel sighs. He knows that she wants to believe that, but they saw her collapse in front of them. The ambulance crashed and burned. No one could survive that. Summer argues. What if it was all a scheme by Jeremy Stark, who forced their mother to go along with his plan to frame Diane for murder? Mom didn't have a choice, and even though she regretted things she'd done, she was trapped. Daniel questions why she wouldn't come home now that Stark's body has been found. Summer intones, not if she was the one who killed him. Daniel exclaims, oh my god, Summer, oh my god. Summer pleads with him to listen. It was an accident. She was trying to get away from him. 
she can't come back, or she'd be arrested for his murder. Daniel retorts that if it was self-defense, why wouldn't she come back? Summer hollers, because who would believe her? She'd be the one in jail right now for murder instead of dying. Daniel, we have to do something. I don't know what, but we can't let our mother slip away from us forever. At the jazz lounge, Michael says it was Victor and Nikki's rush to judgment that made him realize that's just the kind of jury that Diane would be going up against in court. Everybody deserves legal representation, innocent or guilty. And they deserve an attorney that works to make sure the system works fairly for everybody. Lauren fumes that there were plenty of other lawyers who could have defended her with no emotional ties. Michael argues his emotional ties make him better. Lauren seeds, not this time. She intones, her killer could go free because of you. And if that happens, I don't know if I could ever look at you again. In the park, Daniel tells Summer he knows how hard it is to let go. He loves her and will be there for her every step of the way. Summer laughs. He thinks she's out of her mind. Daniel gets why she'd be so desperate to come up with some way to believe their mom is still out there somewhere. Summer exclaims, she is. I saw her. Daniel, exasperated, says that that were true it would make everything easier for her and Kyle and fix things with Diane, but it's not real. He suggests she go home to get some rest. Summer pulls away when he reaches for her arm. She's distraught that he doesn't believe her and starts screaming, Mom. Daniel holds her as she cries in frustration. At Jabot, Jack muses that there will never be anyone like Phyllis again. Billy thinks that's a good thing. The world couldn't handle another Phyllis Summers. When Billy steps away to take a call from Chelsea, Jack flashes through his past with Red. At the added house, Tucker admits to Ashley that he hasn't yet checked out of the athletic club. He wonders how the others will react. Ashley says they all have bigger things on their mind than him. Tucker will try to give Tracy, Kyle, and the others the breathing room they need. Ashley wonders if he'll hole up and brood. She knows he doesn't handle being at loose ends well, so encourages him to figure out what he wants to do next. At the jazz club, Michael tells Warren he truly believes Diane is telling the truth. She believes she was set up. Unfortunately, the man responsible will never pay for it. He tells Lauren that Stark is dead, which makes it harder to keep Diane out of prison. But he won't let him win, even from the grave. At Jebat, Jack tells Billy it may take him some time for him to get his mind around never seeing Phyllis again. He muses about their story ending in so much anger and resentment. Billy thinks it's important he acknowledge what she meant to him in his life. Jack tells his brother he's spot on. I needed to look back before I could move forward. Now he's more determined than ever to marry Diane. Life is too precious to waste another minute. I can't lose her, not now. In the park, Summer knows Daniel thinks he has to protect her, but that's not what she needs. You're looking at me like I'm crazy. She insists she hasn't had a psychotic break. Should she have their mother call them or something? She doesn't know when or where, but she's going to come back. Daniel wants to believe her, but it's not going to happen. Mama's gone. She's gone. Daniel tells Summer he's sorry. He's not trying to be dismissive or hurt her. Summer says it's not about her feelings, it's about the truth. I talked to her. She told me what happened. Daniel says, okay, let's play this out. If they take this story to Pristine and Chance and tell them Diane is innocent and Stark is guilty. If they pursue it and at a brick wall, they'll end up right where they started. Summer says, or they'll find her and bring her home to us. Daniel hollers that they'll lock her up in jail. Summer laments, so... You're telling him there's nothing we can do. In the jazz lounge, Lauren tells Michael that even if Stark is guilty that doesn't make Diane blameless, she will not share in his belief in her. Michael says she doesn't have to believe in Diane, only him. He would never betray Phyllis in that way. I believe what I'm doing is right and decent. Why don't you have faith in man? At the Abbott house, Ashley and Tucker pour drinks, toast, and talk about him selling McCall. She says his whole identity was tied up in it, so we'll have to figure out who he is now. Tucker is letting go of the past and he's excited about the future, which seems wide open. Ashley asks, what's your plan? Tucker has some unfinished business in Genoa City and some refocused priorities, like rebuilding trust with Devon and getting to know his grandson. He teases that making himself irresistible to Ashley will be a full-time job. Ashley grins. She thinks he might have to have something else in mind other than that. Tucker's planning to seduce her 24 7 only taking breaks for sustenance. Suddenly, Jack enters. Tucker holds up a hand in greeting. Ashley informs Jack that Tucker's her guest and he should get used to seeing him around there more regularly. Jack asks, why is that? Ashley says she asked him to move in. 
She adds that Jack told her his personal life is none of her business, so she figured that must work both ways. Jack fumes and storms off. Tucker quips, that went well. At the jazz club, Lauren grits that she will never see Diane as innocent, because she made Phyllis last month a living nightmare. She knows Phyllis brought a lot of it on herself, but she paid dearly. Because of Diane, Phyllis left this way too soon. She cries, you're right, we shouldn't be here, this is just too painful. With that, she gets up and flies out. In the part, Daniel promises Summer they will get through this together. That's what Mom would want. He wants to walk her home, but she needs another moment. She flashes to Phyllis saying, Whatever you decide, I'll love you. I'll never stop loving you. She tells Daniel, I'm going to miss her so much. Daniel rubs her arm, me too. Hand in hand, they leave the park. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and stay with us.